Hi guys, I'm Charles and in today's video I will be setting up, deciding on and testing the paint scheme that I'm going to be using for my 2023 Hobby Apocalypse Army. For those of you that don't know what the Hobby Apocalypse is, it is a community challenge run over by some of the guys in the DeploymentZone.tv Discord, which is very simply you paint 250 points a month for 6 months and it will give you 1500 points of an army by the end of it. In previous years it has been very specific that it's 1500 points of the same army. In year one, I followed along and I did the Grey Knights. In year two, I did Alpha Legion. And this year is slightly different in that the rules are completely free from army affiliation. However, I'm going to continue with the single army. I'm going to be painting up my new GC Lecoultes. This is a completely new army to me. I love their aesthetic, but I don't know really how I want to paint them. So, this video is going to be talking through my test model and color scheme and how I pick out color schemes in general. When first picking a colour scheme, my first step is always within the law. If there's a particular faction that I think is really cool or if I like the look of them, I'm going to go with those. For example, my Alpha Legion from Hobby Apocalypse 2022 or my Imperial Fists in the Horus Heresy Force. The first step here for me was to read through the codex and more importantly, look at the pictures. There are loads of pictures in a codex. I wanted to see if there are any paint jobs that really leapt out of me. In this case there really weren't many or any, and given that the cult could rise up on any civilization, the colours of their clothes could be all over the shop. Another suggestion from a friend who also collects the cults was to just pick a high fleet I liked and use their colours as the base. Would have been really great advice and a good place to start if I liked any of the high fleets. Unfortunately I don't, so I was back into trawling social media, looking at Facebook, looking at Instagram to find these photos of the cults and see how other people were painting them. Whilst no paint jobs really jumped out and piqued my interest, there were a few colour combinations from the codex that I really did like. In the Rusted Claw, they use a very vibrant orange cloth and some warm ivory cream mining suits. I like this colour combination, however painting orange can be a bit of a challenge. And given that the fact there will be a lot of models to paint, not exactly feasible for me wanting to do this in a very quick manner. I will be using this as an accent colour to add pop however, and for HQ units having a completely bright robe of orange will allow me to easily spot them on the tabletop and differentiate them as leaders of the cult. For the skin of the models, I do want to do that iconic purpley pink Tyranid tone, but nowhere near as strong as the models in the codex are painted with, and by not having the orange as vibrant, I'll be able to give it a desaturated warm tone, reminiscent of a dust covered mining colony that this uprising will be taking place in. Where the orange accents make sense is a bit of a safety feature, and given that it's probably going to be the usual boring workwear clothes. I've elected for a blue-grey for the base colour for these clothes as it's just going to colour, cover the need, add a bit of colour. And as it's the other side of the colour wheel from orange, it's going to be a great source of contrast and work very well. So I have the main colours picked out, a warm ivory cream for the armour, a pale purple for the skin, a bright orange accent colour and then a neutral blue-grey for the cloth. I will also be using a mix of metallics and washes for armour and trinkets around the model, but safe to assume a gun metal for any weaponry and then maybe some black casing on the guns and wood on the shotgun stocks. As this is a test model I'll only really be painting it to about 80% of the quality of the rest of the models in the army. The main point of this test model is to see how the colours interact and get the overall feel of the model. Since GNC Lecoultes are a horde army I'm going to have near enough 100-150 models to paint so I'm going to be trying to set up this scheme think about it in a way to, that will allow me to batch or speed paint. I'll be making use of minimal highlights and therefore using washes as much as I can to add the detail and depth. I started with the cloth and I used a coat of cold corpse blue here. It's a very nice neutral blue grey, it complements the orange very well and the cold and neutral tone will help draw the eye to the warm tones as that is where I want the focus to be. I followed this up later on with a wash of Norn oil just to pull out some of the details if anybody did want to get a closer look. The next step after this is to add the orange. I use Orange Fire from Vallejo here as a very super vibrant against the blue orange. I wanted to see how this worked to pull the eyes. There are two main observations I had from doing this on the test model. It's a bit of a nightmare to build up is the first one. It takes a few coats to get the coverage. This is easily rectifiable as in later versions I can just use the airbrush. It's a very easy way to get light colours with good coverage. But secondly I don't really like having quite as much as I did on this model specifically. I want the orange to add a real just pop as a very light accent colour but also for 
the models that are the leaders of the cult, they want to have a lot of orange on it. So having it as just a few accent colours is the way I want to go on the normal troop. So for the rest of the models in the scheme, I think I'm going to have all of the arm bits the same colour and then only small parts of orange to give a sense of cohesion to draw it all together, almost as if it's a small thing that somebody could wear to signify that they're part of the cult. The main aspect and the colour of this army is going to be those ridged mining suits. For this, I really like the warm creams in some of the photos in the codex, and I wanted to have my own go at this, but with a slightly more yellowy tinge to give it an impression that they're just starting to get sun bleached. In order to achieve this, I applied a thinned coat of Vampire Fang from Two Thin Coats. When I start doing this on multiple models at a time in larger parts of the batch process, I'm going to apply this through the airbrush, as it will not only be faster, it will also give me a much more consistent finish compared to when using the brush. The next step for this will be to apply a sepia wash, but I don't want to do that yet as I want to get all of the base colours down before I do any washes so that the washes have a chance to fully dry before I can come back. And then when I'm batching them together, it's going to be a more efficient way to maximise my output on that process. Traditionally, gene stealers have a very purpley blue tyranid skin, and whilst I like that look on gene stealers, I wanted to create a very sinister, subtle purple tint to the skin for the humanoid variants. To achieve this, I will need a very pale flesh tone to start with, and I found that the best way to do this in order to stop the skin from looking flat and grey is to add a strong, rich tone underneath to first help add the saturation and shadows for the paler skin on the top. Ninjon has recently put out a great video about painting undead flesh that explains and explores this concept brilliantly. For this base tone, I just use one coat of Bugman's Glow. The coverage here is not overly essential, as it's there to just give some warmth and I don't need it to be perfect for when I come in over the top with a pale flesh. Whilst that was drying, I began work on the decidedly tyrannid parts of this model, namely the extra arm and the chitinous sleeves that they have. Similarly enough, for models with claws, I'll also be painting them in this way. I start with the Vallejo Bone White, and this does look quite similar, if a little paler than the Vampire Fang that I used for the suit, but the washes will pull these further and further apart. To be honest, if I wanted to save as much time as possible on the batch painting, I would paint them both in the same colour and then let the washes do the rest. At this point, I can really see the whole model coming together, how the colours are all going to work, and happily enough, with the exception of the orange, it's all working out just about how I expected it to in my head. Typically for the guns, I don't like painting them all metal, but for this heavy mining laser I want to be a really brutal tool that they didn't put any thought into making look pretty or giving it any sort of casing. In order to get this, I painted the whole thing in gunmetal from Vallejo. I then used Balthazar Gold to break up the profile a bit and pull out some of the areas of interest. I also painted the spare battery pack on the backpack with this gold as well. The next step is to pull out all of the leather straps and stuff around the model with cuirass leather from two thin coats. Whilst not strictly necessary for a battle ready paint job, taking a few minutes to pick out these small details can really help raise the paint job to the next level. It shows more attention and care and it really helps to break up the colours a little bit more, allowing people's brain to understand what parts of the models are which, but it is a trade off. Given that if I take an average of 2 minutes per model to do this with the cables, the pipes and the leather, then over the entire army of 100 to 150 miniatures I'm going to be adding at least several hours work. However, I think ultimately the end result is absolutely worth it and I'm happy to spend the time to do it. The final stage before I break out the washes is to bring that pale flesh up and ready for washing it with the purple. I use Vallejo Pale Flesh here as it works really well over the Bugman's Glow. Typically I've always found this paint to dry a decidedly not flesh colour, but when I add this undertone from Bugman's Glow it really helps bring it into the human colour range for Caucasian skin. With all the base coats down, I can really say, and you might be thinking it as well, it's quite beige and somewhat flat. This is where the magic of washes is really going to come in to help add some depth, colour and definition to the model. It will also tie it all together. The first wash I started with was Sepia Wash from Two Thin Coats. It adds a lovely warmer brownish tone over the Vampire Fang. It pulls brilliantly in all of the ridges and gives that really lovely sense of detail. The next is Norn Oil over the metals to knock back some of the shine and bring it into that well used dull sheen. The third and final wash is going to be very very thinned out Citadel Zerius Purple with about 6 parts of water to 1 part of paint to just begin to colour the various bone white and pale flesh parts with that subtle sinister purple vibe. This does require a few layers to give it that even coverage but the slightly patchier purple of the bruised flesh is also quite a nice effect that I think I might have in some of the models intentionally. I then left all of these washes to dry for a few hours in a warm room. Normally I like to do a big wash step and then leave them at least overnight to dry, but I was really enjoying this paint scheme and wanted to get it as finished as soon as I could. 
With the washes applied, you can really see that the colors are starting to look very different from one another, but they all tie together in a nice way because they share those common undertones. I wanted to add some quick highlights to the armor to help pull the eye there, and to do this I used Ivory Tusk from Two Thin Coats. It's a nice bright off-white, and on parts of the raised edges I've applied this. I really like how it looks over the washed sandy brown of the armor when I edge highlight as well. And whilst it's not exactly the warm cream that I had in mind when I first started, I have to say I think it works really well anyway, and I'm going to be keeping it for the rest of the army. The final step to bring this all together is the bases. This is the world that they're all stood on, it makes sense for it all to be the same, and just makes your brain read it as these guys belong together. I've chosen for a very simple earthy sandy rocky tone, as if they've just come out of the mines and they're stood on the entrance way around it. To start I gave it a base coat of Vallejo Earth Brown, and once this is dried I dry brushed over Heavy Brown, also from Vallejo, though to be honest the difference here is not that noticeable, so I will be cutting this step from the final scheme. A quick wash of Agrax Earthshade sped up with the hairdryer helps add some detail and pull out some natural highlights, and then I came in with two dry brushes to really pull out those rocky textures. I started with a reasonably heavy dry brush of Carrick Stone from Citadel, and then a very light pale sand to add a dusty effect and highlight over the base. To finish it all off, I super glued down some dead grass tufts that I had in the bottom of my basing box, and in order to protect this paint job from being damaged at all when I play with the models and have them on the tabletop, I've used Rust-Oleum Matte Varnish out of an aerosol can. However, for some reason, this finish with a slightly satin gloss finish, so I might go back and redo it with some airbrush varnish to lock it all in and dull it back. And there we have it. This is the first test model for my brand new Genesis and Quartz Army. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on how I build up a colour scheme and set it up for speed painting. If you would like to get the monthly updates about what I've painted for this year's Hobby Apocalypse, feel free to follow me on Instagram where I'll be posting the end of the month parade shots. I'll have that link down below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching the video, please leave a like and let me know in the comments down below what you thought. What process do you go through when you like to pick a colour scheme? If you want to know when I next upload, you can subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.